Welcome back for another Super Magnet Man video. This time we're going to be working on a project that helps us look at wave energy. Now wave energy is one of the forms of green energy that we hear about today, but not very much work has been done on actually commercializing this, so we're looking at some of the factors that affect it. I first got this idea, it was about 15 years ago, and a customer of mine called me and he said, hey, I'm retired, I live on a boat off the coast of California, and every day I'm having to crank up my diesel generator to run the batteries and charge them up so that I can use electricity during the night and things like this. He said, isn't there a way that I can take advantage of my boat rocking back and forth and make enough electricity to power my lights? It's not much. And I said, well, yes, there is. And he wanted to talk about it with magnets. So we talked about it a little bit, and I told him he was going to need somebody that was an electronics person to help him with that circuitry for charging his batteries up. And so that's what he did. He got somebody for that. And I told him about the magnet that he needed, and I told him about how to wind the wire and the top setup to make. Well, since he was retired, this became his science project, and a few weeks later he called and he told me he had it worked out and it was making electricity for his boat. So we want to take a look today at some of the factors that affect a project like this. So let's take a look at what those factors are. First, I'll do you an example so you can see what we're talking about. Then we're going to compare three different types of magnets, a ring magnet, one inch diameter, half inch thick, and one inch diameter, one inch long with a quarter inch hole in the middle. Those are the three magnets. Then we're going to compare wire size, 24 gauge versus 28 gauge. And then we're going to see how this applies to wave generation. And as we're going through these, we're going to take a look as to how load affects it. And then, you guessed it, we're going to see how big can we go. Now we're going to take a look at the three different types of magnets and see how they affect our generation. We want to start this with, an ex with just sort of an example of what's going on and what we're going to be working with. To start with, I've got my oscilloscope iPad. This is from Oskim, and they have a great tool. It turns my iPad into an oscilloscope that has been very helpful in this experiment. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to tap the screen so it clears that. I have a one inch diameter, half inch thick N50 magnet. This is 400 turns of number 20 gauge wire. And I've got it hooked up to the oscilloscope, so let's see what happens when we drop it. We drop it, we get 14.81. I like to drop it two or three times to sort of get it to where it's something repeatable. So we drop it again, 15.24. And remember, all I'm doing is just dropping it and catching it. So I got 15.24 two times in a row. The max voltage is 7.26. So what I have is peak to peak is 15.24, and then the max was 7.26. Now let's summarize our data. Our smallest magnet was the ring magnet, and it's going to serve as our base for comparison. Now, as we look at the data, the key thing that stands out is we have 830 gauss on the surface of the pipe, which is the inside of our coil, and it is producing 6.98 volts peak to peak open circuit. Next, we looked at the one inch diameter, half inch thick N50 disc magnet, and we had 1,750 gauss on the outside of the PVC pipe, the inside of the coil, and it produced 15.24 volts peak to peak. Then we looked at our largest magnet, one inch diameter, one inch thick, N50 with a quarter inch hole in the middle. That one gave us 2100 gauss on the inside of the coil, surface, the surface of the PVC, and 24.13 volts peak to peak. When you're looking at using magnetism, you want to use the magnetism as close to the surface of the magnet as you can. Notice that we have lost 80% of our flux on the ring magnet from the just going through the PVC pipe. We lost 80% of the possible energy we had available to us. And we lost 70% on the one by half, and we lost 70% on the one by one. So these are huge losses before we even start energizing the coil. And when you get to it, by the time you get to the outside coil, you have lost 96 to 97% of your total energy available. So our first design objective would be to minimize wall thickness. So remember that, we wanna minimize wall thickness. 
Let's see how a load affects our output from this coil. So one experiment that I like to do and demonstrate how much power it's generating, and of course this isn't actually measuring the power, but this just is a nice little demonstration of it, is I've got some magnets inside of this coil of wire. This is 200 turns of number 28 gauge wire. And so we're gonna drop the magnet through this pipe. We're dropping the one inch one through, and let's see what happens to the magnets in that coil. You see that they jumped out. We generated enough energy in the coil to make the magnets jump out. Our next factor is wire size. And we're gonna take a look at that and then see how load affects our wire selection. Wire. We have 28 gauge wire and I have 500 turn coil of it and I have a 500 turn coil. This top coil is 500 turns of number 24 gauge. I'm using those coils because they are the same distance from the top of the pipe. So let's take a look at what the other differences are between these wires. Using the smaller wire, the 28 gauge wire, I am able to get this outside diameter of the wire down to two inches, which is 50 millimeters. On the larger wire, it takes two and a half inch outside diameter in order to get this many turns, and that's 63 and a half millimeters. The next parameter we look at is the gauss outside of that coil. This is where the big impact is. Because the 28 gauge is smaller and closer to the surface, the gauss reading on the outside of it with the big magnet, the one inch diameter, one inch thick with a quarter inch hole in it, is 656. The other one, the 24 gauge, because it's a bigger coil, puts the outside coil that much farther away from the magnet, it's down to 300 gauss in just that extra distance. Then we looked at the resistance of the coils. The 28 gauge has a higher resistance, it's a smaller diameter, so its resistance was 14.7 ohms for the coil, whereas the 24 gauge is 6.9 ohms, so you have a different resistance. Now we're gonna take a look at how this impacts what we see on the screen. To do this part and to test it, we're gonna use a one inch diameter, half inch thick N50 magnet, and we drop it in, and we get 21.59, we'll drop it a couple of times and see which one is the most consistent, 22.01 and 22.01. So I would say 22.01 is the number we get for this one. Now, now we want to review all that data. Our first one we're looking at is the one inch diameter, half inch thick magnet. And we notice that with the 28 gauge wire, we had 29.63 volts peak to peak with no load. When we added a load, it dropped to 17.8. Then we tried that with the 24 gauge wire and we went to 22.01 with the 28, 24 gauge wire and it had no load. And when we put a load on it, it dropped to 16.95. Next, we moved up to our one inch diameter by one inch thick magnet. And when we ran the experiment with it, the larger magnet produced 40.21 volts with 28 gauge wire but with a load, it dropped to 25.61. Then we see the 24 gauge wire had 34.29 and it dropped to 25.4. So you can see with the large magnetic field, it, did, it dropped significantly more with the 28 gauge than it did with the 24 gauge, but they ended up very close to the same final voltage. So you're now seeing the impact that it makes on your wire decision. Choosing the right size wire for your application is very important. Our next factor relates to wave generation and how we can use multiple coils and magnets to increase power output. We want to take a look at what happens when we have multiple magnets going through multiple co coils and we're gonna look at those together. I've added enough weight to get this whole assembly up to 155 grams. The coils are spaced the distance apart that the magnets are thick, which allows us to look at the magnetic field as it goes through for two different magnets. Remember that as it falls, the second one will be going a little bit faster than the first one until we put a load on it. And the load that goes on with the first one is going to slow it, the whole assembly down a little bit. 
and at the bottom we've got rubber compound in the bottom that allows it to bounce, but we had to space it far enough away from the coils so that when it bounced it gen didn't generate a field back into coils in the opposite direction. We want to look at this, our middle coil is hooked up to a full wave rectifier. The full wave rectifier is going to take the bottom half of the sine wave and flip it positive on one reading. That's only on the middle coil. The bottom coil is going to be showing us the green one, so it should be going a little faster when it gets to that one, and we should get a little bit higher voltage output from the bottom coil. So let's see what we get. As we go up, we get it up to where we can line up the magnet right at the top and drop. And now you can see we're getting 27.3 volts on the peak to peak for the green one, 13.18 is the max. Then you look at coil two, which was the other one, it should be a little less, it's reading 12.6 for its volts on the maximum, and the peak to peak doesn't really count because the minimum is going to be zero. What this does is allow us to see, we can use something like this full wave rectifier, it's putting a little bit of load on it, it's not putting a lot, but it's putting enough to make it slow down just a little bit, and if, as opposed to not having it hooked up at all, we get just a little bit higher, like 29 volts on the green one when we're not running with that. Now what we've got is the big part that we've been talking about. We've teased you a couple of times already with what's coming. That's next. So we want to tie this back in with what we started with, wave generation. And if you think about sitting on a boat and you are rocking slowly back and forth with the waves, you can see that you can make electricity with this. Now, we would love it if the waves were going faster or if they were going higher, and you can put bigger coils with it or you can use larger magnets to get more power out of it, but this just gives you an idea. If you're looking at how the waves normally go, you're able to see this. The waves on the screen are pretty much replicating what we see, but we're running in the two, three, four, five volt range as opposed to when we dropped it, we were able to see it get us a much higher number and look, it goes off scale on this one. All right, so you've been waiting for it all the way to the end. We've had a couple of teasers to sort of let you know what's coming as we go along. You know at Super Magnet Man, we love to see how big can we go. Well, this time what we're going to do is work with a two-inch diameter pipe, and we've got two coils that we're going to be looking at them a little bit differently. We've got two coils. They're 500 turns, number 24 gauge wire, and we have a giant set of magnets. This is two inches in diameter, two inches thick, and we've added the copper weight to it. The copper weight adds more mass, so as it's falling, it can produce more work than it could if it was just the magnets. So when I drop this to begin with, we're going to take a look and see what we get. Line it up at the top. This is about 38 inches of vertical drop, and we're going to drop into the bucket and there's no resistance. It goes through it. We can see on the meter that we peg the meter. It's at 216 volts for one coil and its peak to peak is 211 on the other one. The maximum voltage is 135 and 131. The difference is because it's going a little faster when it reaches that green coil, the one that's showing with the green bar, than it is when it hits the upper coil. That's just a few inches of difference, but you can see that it makes it go off scale. And so now we're going to take a look at the gauss level reading so we know what our magnetic field strength is with this kind of a magnet. And on the surface of the magnet at the corner measured perpendicular like we've done on all the others it's 8600 gauss. On the surface of the PVC at the same angle 3500 gauss. Outside of a coil perpendicular to the magnet it is maximum value is 1350. So you can see we're dealing with a lot of flux here but we're also dealing with a lot of surface area on this coil. This is a lot more wire than what we had before. So now what we're going to do is hook up a little load to it. This was open circuit and of course when I held it you feel no resistance. The, the magnet just falls through it with no resistance on the pipe whatsoever. Now when we add a little electrical resistance, let's see what happens. So now we're going to test this with a little bit of load. And a little bit of load is going to be, I have this uh, 800 turn coil of number 18 gauge wire, and I'm going to put a magnet inside of it so we can tell that something is really happening. Then I have a magnet inside of this one. I have our one inch diameter, one inch thick N50 magnet, and it's spaced 
dead center of this coil. This is a 1,000 turn coil, 28 gauge wire. Now this coil is hooked up to the top set of coils here. And this coil is hooked up to the bottom one. And I'm gonna drop the magnet through here and let's see what happens. Remember I'm dropping this, this is two two by one magnets put together, giving me a two by two magnet. I've got the copper on it, adding weight to it. This brings the total mass that's falling to 4.2 pounds or 1.9 kilograms. So we're gonna extract a certain amount of that. Now that we're requiring it to do work, we're going to get some energy out of this and it's gonna create quite a tug on this pipe. So I have to hold it very, very tight. All right, here we go. Now we want to take a look at what we saw on the voltage output. Remember the numbers we were getting with open circuit. Now, the one that's powering this large coil and has the magnet inside of it, the green line is giving us 30.56 maximum peak-to-peak -peak voltage and 16.98 volts. So we saw that maximum voltage drop quite a bit because we put a load on it. You saw the other one that has a much lower load on it. It's a thousand turn but 28 gauge wire. This has got 26 ohms of resistance and that only dropped that voltage down to 144 and 83.2 volts and it wasn't going as fast at that point. But this lets you see the impact that the amount of about the amount of work that you're expecting it to do is going to have on the energy output when you're using it in a generation mode. We wanted you to understand how the magnets and the coils and the wire size, all of this comes together to help us make electricity through wave generation or any other means that you might come up with. Thanks again for watching.